I started off with um, archaeology. I, from the time I was little, I wanted to be an archaeologist, and it, it stemmed from the Indiana Jones movies, stupidly enough. <laughs> and, and then I took two years of um, classical and Near Eastern archaeology, and I, I absolutely hated it. But I stuck with it because, you know, I just thought I needed to see it through. Um, then I took a, an art history class with Ruth, Ruth Cuthand, who is a well-known Aboriginal contemporary artist, and I fell in love with art history. I've always liked history, and, um, but when I came across art history, and I just started researching and looking into artists, and I just fell in love with it, and I just knew that um, art history was what I wanted to, to focus on. So I did a four-year um, honors degree in art history, and um, I focused in on contemporary Aboriginal art. And I learned a lot about post-colonial theory and, you know, that type of thing. Um, I had a great mentor with um, Lynn Bell and uh, her husband, Keith Bell, um, ex-husband, sorry. Um, so I learned a lot from, from them. And another person that really influenced me was Gary Young, who is an artist out of Saskatoon. Um, and he was at that time running the Snell Grove, Snell Grove Gallery um, on campus. So that was my first job, um, was assisting him. It was through a grant. And um, that's how I became interested in curating. Was, and I had no idea what it was or how to do it or how to go about it. And I was, um, but I was really interested. I was intrigued by the whole notion. So, I did my master's, but I had to create my own program, so it was difficult. But it was great because at that same time, um, a friend of mine, Joy Arkand, who's another really great artist, um, we decided to um, start an art gallery because there was no art gallery at that time. And I had worked with Tribe with Laurie Blondeau before that, um, but they don't have an, an art gallery. They kind of mediate with other artists, with other galleries, and um, they're, re they're a really great organization as well. And I learned a lot from Laurie and Artist Run Center Culture. Um, so we started the gallery and um, just started writing grants and curating shows. And I met Wally at university, but he was a great support um, at the Redshift Gallery for years and he created some of his work there and um, there was a lot of artists that came through and volunteered and it, you know I learned a lot from other artists and other curators. I met a lot of people those years that we ran in the Redshift Gallery. As I had a residency through um, uh, Canada Council. They had a, they give out two grants a year to Aboriginal curators, emerging curators and so I had a um, uh, a grant through them with the AKA Artists um, Artist Run Center in Saskatoon. And so my name was on online, so I think that's how she came across my name. Yeah, and then I choose the artist. Um, I've always kind of um, approached um, creating shows the same way, and it's, it's always through my own situated knowledge. Like, I find that um, my writing and my thinking around exhibitions and artists is much more powerful if it's through my own situated knowledge. So that's been my, my kind of a theme throughout my, my work. I think if someone walks into the gallery, I kind of want them to, to look at Wally's pieces as, as if they're these post-colonial maps. Um, First Nations people have always had maps pre-contact, whether it's through oral knowledge or through pictograph, petroglyphs. And this is, to me, a contemporary form of mapping. Because as First Nations people, we have to navigate through bureaucracies, through institutions, much more differently than non-Aboriginal people. Um, we hit ceilings. You know, there's all kinds of obstacles. Um, whether you grow up um, in First, First Nations communities or not, you still have to navigate as a First Nations person. And, and I find that we all help each other in those ways. So it's kind of my way of marking it visually. Um, you can read the online essay and it goes further into it. But, um, you know, because Wally and I are both from Saskatchewan, we have a rich history in these pre-contact maps. You know, like on the Churchill River, they have petroglyphs. Um, in, his, in his area, 
you know, on the planes. They have these huge um, effigies, like uh, human effigies, like made out of rocks, and they have, um, you know, like there's a big buffalo, you know, like made out of uh, their boulder monuments. There's all types of things, or there's um, in Saint Victor, there's carved um, effigies in the rock. They don't know where they came from, but they're there, and they mark different things, you know, and it's always to aid and to help. You know, it's always used to to help people. So, like that's that's how I view his his work. Well, I've always been interested in art and um, like these um, drawings by younger children. I was drawing on um, rolls of paper in, in school in elementary school, and I was encouraged by my teachers for most of those years and all of my life. I've been, just been encouraged by people and. Um, so I've been developing and developing over the years, and I guess in, in I remember in school they used to say um, maybe they would I don't know if it was just selecting kids that were interested in it and saying oh there's um, I remember there was a guy named, I think his name was Pedro and and then there was me and I was always jealous of um, Pedro's drawing because he just he just draw like perfect horse heads <laughs> that was his thing and um, they were perfect and I was always thinking God that guy is such a good artist and then. I think we were, in, and then in high school there was another fellow, Jude, and so we were, yeah, it was always sort of like we were we were the artists, and people would just sort of say, um, you know, oh well, he's an artist, so let's like you got to give him like extra room, and I was always getting extra credits for this project or that project in school, but um, yeah, I just carried that through right to, to university and um, pushed through. I mean, there was there was questioning and doubting, and, and through the years, I mean. Um, there was a time there I was working with um, kids in foster care and social service uh, type uh, organizations and justice, and I still have a lot of um, passion for that kind of work, um, sort of like advocacy and, and just real um, grassroots uh, activism, and that maybe that comes through a little bit in the work. Um, some maybe not, maybe not this work or, or that work, but a lot of my work has themes of social responsibility and sort of. Uh, historic knowledge and sort of what's happening today in, in the politics of w whichever. I, sometimes I'm, I'm thinking of my work not necessarily as the um, particular like uh, racial uh, relations but more in terms of class relations to I think of it in that terminology as well. We, uh, Felicia and I, we, we've always talked about our other First Nations um, curators and artists have talked about like just um, uh, First Peoples around the world and how these struggles are, yeah, like, you know, she said colonialism and that sort of idea between um, have and have nots and, and the history that set that up. Yeah, I started at the U of S and, um, and um, again, I was in art and um, I was, uh, it was, it was a weird little program, not the, not the, um, anyways, I was almost going into, I almost went into uh, geology and geography. I was getting really good marks in both of those um, areas and I was getting letters from their um, the head of their departments just saying like your, your marks are really good and you should consider going into our program full-time and um, I wasn't getting no such letters from <laughs> the art department so I was uh, I was I, I took off uh, a couple years from school I came back and I, and I finished up at the U of S and um, I, I was I was proud of the work that I um, finished there large portraits and Things started to. I started to get an idea of what I was going to do and who, who I was as an artist. And then um, I spent a few years out ha as an artist, working and making art, and um, having a few shows. And then I went back to school for my Master of Fine Arts, and I went to uh, a program down in the states at Rhode Island School of Design, and I studied with a fellow there named Dwayne Slick. And um, I finished that uh, a couple years ago. And so. It's been it's been a journey. Uh, I started doing these large portraits in university in my BFA, and I was um, really um, looking at artists like uh, Chuck Close, who would um, commit to these large portraits and cropped in faces, and I wanted to do that. And uh, my my work was um, at that time. I, I remember that one piece. It was a little bit um, off center, so I had to add a canvas to the left of it, and then. Then the painting didn't work, so I had to add a canvas to the right, and then 
it wasn't balanced, and then I added a canvas. To it. So I just, for that in piece in particular, I just kept um, adding canvases to it, and that's sort of where my um, jigsaw uh, mentality started to come in, and, and where I would assemble a large work with the multiples and the pieces, um, and the sort of um, collectiveness that Felicia was talking about in her um, thesis, or not thesis, but a uh, curatorial statement. So um, that sort of continued, and, and this idea of like just solving problems was carried through to um, even the circuit board works. I mean, the first star blanket I made was in, in response to um, a, a show I was doing about Aboriginal or Native First, Nation, First Nations people. I, in the US, they call it Native American in Canada, it's First Nations, but it was Aboriginal, and now it's, anyways. Um, First Nations people in the workforce, um, they're uh, getting all this negative hype and, and so I was making these large portraits and sort of propaganda, Soviet era propaganda posters about the red worker and how scary that would have been to, uh, to see that kind of um, imagery on billboards and these sort of proud, um, competent um, First Nations men and women and I, I had to um, represent um, the people who are working with um, their skills and their sort of support skills and people who are working with um, maybe technology and other um, less like visually inspirational um, like iconography r rather than a hammer or a, a large um, power tools. How do I paint somebody with a computer terminal? So I um, address that through the use of the actual material of technology, the motherboard, the circuit board, and um, and I coupled that with the um, traditional um, activity of quilting, and which on the on the plains took the uh, sh took the shape or the form of quilting gill be quilting bees, or groups of ladies typically that would gather together and quilt um, um, blankets or or clothing just from the scraps of um, material. As you know, the 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 a full sheet of material was expensive so like typically and not just for First Nations people um, but any any um, settler or people in society where uh, money was an issue the scraps were generally what they used to assemble the the quilts and large tapestries so that's where the um, star blankets came from and from there I, I simply just progressed into uh, other works nam namely the Thunderbirds and this work, specifically the shapes that are employed through this uh, body of work, the, the triangle, the geometry, and then their um, polygons. One, um, you, know, you know, Felicia was talking about the aspect of markers and land markers and um, the mapping of, of the planes and finding direction. And the one area of this work that was sort of interest, of interest to me was the idea of the um, the triangle and be that facing upwards or facing downwards and I've sort of started to build this um, um, personal mythology or build upon which which is already in existence in a lot of other circles being that the mountain is a upward facing triangle and sort of that is like a for me a symbol of our um, our current Western ideology of the strength of, of hum, human achievement through um, accomplishment and through conquering and conquering the mountain and, and achieving the heights of all of our, um, our technology and, and um, all of our aspirations. And so what we sort of feed ourselves in, in terms of um, just that achievement. And then the, um, the downward facing uh, triangle being the, the cave or the um, return to a um, subterranean environment. And so what I've what I've assigned to those sort of two polar viewpoints is the, the mountain being Olympus uh, or the masculine and where we, where we live today and the cave being the, the feminine. And sort of those markers are, are what I'm sort of trying to um, map out is how to find a balance between those two um, ideologies and how in, in this sort of um, mythology I've put place the um, um, in, indigenous people of the world in that sort of cave um, realm or that realm of um, other um, beliefs and sort of that connection 